Hello everybody, this is Mr. Douse, uh, and uh, this video is going to cover arithmetic and geometric sequences. Um, so uh, when it comes to math, there are a lot of times where there are patterns between uh, a set of numbers. And, and, and today we're going to be talking about arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences, which is going to start off with, with a number and then we're going to apply some kind of pattern to that number to get to the next number and so on. Um, so this first part of the lesson is talking about arithmetic sequences, and it says an arithmetic sequence is the difference between each pair of consecutive terms is the same. Now, whenever we're talking about arithmetic sequences, we're either going to add or subtract values from an initial value here. In this case, this is the first term to get to the next term and then apply that same pattern to get to the next term and the next term here by either adding or subtracting. Uh, and so I'll get to this here in a moment. That's actually my first example down here. Um, but there's an equation you can use in arithmetic sequences to find the nth term. Uh, for example, we have the first term here, second term here. This 16 is the third term of the sequence. This is the fourth term. What if we wanted to find like the 50th, the 50th term or the 65th term or the 100th term? Well, it would take a while to continue adding and finding the pattern here. Uh, and you can make an, an, an error or whatnot. But there's an equation right here that you can use to find any, any term down the line here. And if I, if I look at this equation, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. And a sub 1 is the first term. So in this example here, this, this 2 is my first term. And then my 9 is my second term. My 16 is my third term. The 23 is my fourth term. And then we can find the fifth term or beyond by using this equation. Um, and then d is the common difference. Uh, so if I look from 2 to 9, we're adding the same number, in this case 7, to get from 2 to 9. And then if I add 7 again to 9, I get to 16. So in this case, the d would be 7. And then m is the, is the term you're trying to find here. So if I want, again, if I want to find the 50th term, I put a 50 in for this n, and I put a 50 in for this n, and I can do the math to find the problem. And, and this is confusing because I'm not actually doing an example here. I'm just trying to explain the basics here. Um, so let's just jump into an example and kind of talk about how this, how this equation works. So first of all, in this example, it says find the common difference in the arithmetic sequence of 2, 9, 16, and 23. So we just did this one before. But if you want to find the difference, you take the second term and you subtract the first term from it to get your, your difference here. So in this case, my first term is, is 2. My second term is 9, so if I do 9 minus 2, the common difference here is 7. In other words, if I add 7 to 2, I get to 9. If I add 7 to 9, I get to 16. If I add 7 to 16, I get to 23. So my d here, my common difference is 7. We're adding 7, so if you want to put a plus sign in there, that might be a good idea. It's up to you. So to find the explicit formula for the arithmetic sequence, you actually need to write down this equation. So I'm going to write down the equation a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. So the explicit formula is you need to plug in the initial value and, co and the common difference. And if you do that, you'll be done with writing the explicit formula. So if I want to find the nth term, I need to plug in the first term, which is my 2. And I'm going to apply the common difference, which is I'm adding 7. And then I'm going to have n minus 1. Again, where n is any number. So this is actually my explicit formula for this sequence here. So if I want to find the hundredth term, this is the beauty of this equation here. If I want to find the hundredth term, so my n here is 100, I would plug in 100 for this n, 2 plus 7, and then I plug in 100 for this n. And then you just do some math here, and you can find what the hundredth term would be in this particular sequence. So this becomes 2 plus 7 times 100 minus 1 is 99. And if you plug that in your calculator, so what we have here, we have 2 plus 7 times 99. So I'm just going to do exactly what it's in the equation here. Don't do 2 plus 7 and get 9 and do 9 times 99. No, no, no. We're going to multiply first here. Order of operation says multiplication comes before adding. So 7 times 9 has to happen first. And then you're going to add 2. But if you just type it in your calculator, as it is in the equation here, you're going to get the right answer every single time. So the hundredth term in this sequence would be 695. <coughs> so that's pretty awesome. So again, if I wanted to find like, I don't know, the 50th term, I would just plug in 50 in for n, 50 in for n here, 
and you would have had 50, and then you have equals 2 plus 7 times 50 minus 1, and then you could find that equation. So this equation here is beautiful to find any term. Uh, so we'll do one more example here, and then I'm going to jump on to geometric sequences. Oops, too far. So find the common difference in the arithmetic sequence of 87 to 83 to 79 to 75. So the common difference, again, I'm going to take the, the second term, subtract the first term, and if I do that, I get a negative 4. So this is my common difference here. If I take 87 and I subtract 4 from it, that gets me to 83. 83 minus 4 gets me to 79. 79 minus 4 gets me to 75. And so find the explicit formula for the arithmetic sequence. So again, I'm going to write down this, this basic um, equation for arithmetic sequences. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. So now that's written down. So again, I need to write down the, the first term and the common difference in here. And then if I only have the n's left over, that means I have the explicit formula. So a sub n equals, my first term is 87, uh, minus 4 times n minus 1. Now, again, the idea is that, that it starts with a positive here, but if you're subtracting, your difference is a negative, you're actually going to have a negative 4 in here. <coughs> so remember, we're not going to be adding 4. We're going to be subtracting 4 from each term. So this is where somebody could kind of make a mistake here. Um, and so this is the explicit formula of this particular sequence. And so if I want to find the 50th term, I just plug in a 50 everywhere I see an n. And if I can simplify this even more, some people will skip this step here and just do 50 minus 1 in their head. I don't want to rush the gun here and, and confuse somebody, so I'm just going to take this extra step. And if I plug this in my calculator, 87, oops, got a glare, minus 4 times 49, oops, sorry, I get a negative 109. So the 50th term for this particular sequence would be negative 109. So um, another uh, problem I'd like to do here is what if I want to find like the fifth term, the sixth term, and the seventh term on this example? So remember, 87 is my first term. You always start with the first term. 83 is my second term. 79 is my third term. 75 is my, my fourth term. What if I want to find my fifth term, my sixth term, and my seventh term, because oftentimes it'll be, you get a question on homework or something like that that says, you know, find the next three terms of the sequence. You can come up with this equation, and you can plug in a five here, a six here, and a seven here to get the answer. Or again, just remember, you're, you're, you have a common difference here. There's a pattern. So I'm subtracting four from each term to get to the next term. So if I want to find the fifth term in this example, I'll just subtract four from 75 and get 71. And if I want to find the sixth term, I'll subtract four again and get 67, and then to the seventh term, subtract 4 from that, and get 63. So this is a good intro video to how to solve uh, arithmetic sequences and come up with an explicit formula and things of that nature. Um, so now I'm going to move on to geometric sequences. So a geometric sequence is, is, is not quite the same. It's a little different. It says uh, in a geometric sequence, the ratio between each pair of consecutive terms is the same. So ratio, you need to be thinking of multiplying or yeah, so multiplying or dividing. But in reality, we're going to be multiplying. So ignore what I said about dividing. <coughs> um, so and I say that for a reason. I mean, you can divide, but in the particular equation we have here, we're multiplying, so we're not going to divide. But there are instances where if you want to get to the next term, you can divide by a number to get to the next term. But for the equation we're going to be coming up with, we have to be multiplying. So, um, so in this example here, I have 8, and then the second term is 4, third term is 2, fourth term is 1, fifth term is 1 half. And so notice there's not a common difference by adding or subtracting here. Um, we're actually multiplying 8 by a number to get to 4, 4 by a number to get to 2, and that same common difference to get to the 1 here. Um, and we'll, we'll go over that here on, on this example I have down here. But there's an equation as well for geometric sequences and it goes a sub n is equal to the first term times the common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. Where again, the first term is, is the first value given in the sequence. r is the common difference between these two, or a common ratio. 
Um, and then and then n is the term you're trying to find. Um, and I have a little tip here to find the common ratio r. Set up a ratio comparing the first two terms, uh, where you compare the second term or the first term, and then you simplify. And so let me apply that actually to this first example down here. Um, and so we'll just continue going through this, um, this this example I have here down here. So find the ratio uh, in the geometric sequence of eight, and then four, two, one, and then one half. And I'm telling you to find the common ratio. You take the second term and divide it by the first term. So my first term is this eight. Second term is the four. So if I do four over eight, that gets me a, and I reduce it down, I get a common ratio of one half. You always want to reduce your ratio as much as you can. So four and eight are both divisible by four. So if I divide both of these by four, then I get one half. Or if you have a calculator, and you, don't, you can't, maybe the fraction's a little crazy. You can do four divided by eight, hit the, the math button down here at the bottom, and then hit enter twice, you can convert the fraction um, to the um, simplest form. So the common ratio is one half. <coughs> so to find the, the equation, the um, explicit formula for a geometric sequence, again, we've got to use a different equation than what we did for arithmetic sequence. I'm going to have a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. And so in this case, I'm out of space here, so I'm going to write it over to the right. My a sub n, uh, keep that as is, my first term is 8 times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. And I'm going to put parentheses here just to indicate that we need to group these together. And I'm going to put parentheses here just to, um, just because I don't like to put the dot or the, 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 the x here. I'm just going to put parentheses here to indicate we're multiplying these two as well. Uh, and so, um, so this is the explicit formula for uh, this particular geometric sequence. And again, notice um, I'm only left with n's. So I plugged in the first term, I plugged in the common ratio, and if I have only n's left over in this equation, then I have the explicit formula for this geometric sequence. So just like the uh, arithmetic sequence, I can now plug in any value for n here to, um, to get any term I want to in the sequence. So to find the 12th term of the sequence, my n here is 12. So my a sub 12 equals 8 times 1 half to the 12 minus 1 power. Again, some people might reduce that in their head, but I'm not going to skip a step here. I don't want to confuse anybody. So when I simplify this, I get 8 times um, 1 half raised to the power of 11. So I have 8 times 1 half to the power of 11. And I'm going to actually, this is a really small number, I'm going to round this to the nearest um, three decimal places. So I get 0 .004. And if you want to, you could do math, enter, enter, and reduce this to a fraction. This also is 1 over 256. So um, I don't know whichever your teacher would prefer, but either one is fine. They're both equivalent to me relatively, because you know, I'm rounding this to the nearest, four, uh, nearest uh, third um, decimal, but relatively speaking, these are, are pretty similar. <coughs> so I can do, um, I'll do one more here, um, and then I'll do one, a word problem to kind of end this off. So uh, find the ratio in the geometric sequence of 3 to 12, 12 to 48, 48 to 192. And so, um, so let's see here. So find the common ratio on this term. I'm going to take the second term and divide it by the first term. So my first term is 3, my second term is 12. So I'd have 12 over 3, and that would reduce down to 4. So my common ratio is 4. Uh, so to find the geometric sequence, you know, I'm going to write down the, the apparent form formula for this. So a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power, where the first term is 3. My common ratio is 4. And I'm going to raise this to the n minus 1 power. So this is the explicit formula because I'm only left with n's. So if I want to find the ninth term of this, I'm going to plug in a, a 9 for the n. And I'll do 3 to the fourth power. And then I'm going to have 9 minus 1, which reduces down to 3 to the fourth power raised to, sorry, 3 times 4 to the eighth power. And this should get pretty big here. 
and I get uh, 196,608. Um, now I want to I want to point out two different things here. First of all, um, when the common ratio is less than one, your values should be getting smaller, which they are here. And then if your common ratio is greater than one, your value should be getting bigger from left to right. So it's kind of a, a dead giveaway that if you have a growing set of numbers here, a growing sequence, your ratio needs to complement that. It needs to be a value greater than one. Um, and then also, if you want to find, let's say, the fifth term here, and then like the sixth term here, and the seventh term, you're welcome to use, um, come up with the uh, explicit formula for that and plug in a five, six, or seven. Or again, you can just multiply the common difference here. All of these are being multiplied by four to get to the next term. So if I want to find like the fifth term, I will take 192 times four, and I would get the next term here, which would be 768. And then again, I can multiply that by that by four to get the next term, and the sixth term here would be 3,072 and then multiply that by four again, the common ratio, and then my seventh term would be 12,288. And so just a kind of a, a quick way if you want to find the next few terms, you don't actually have to go through all the work, just find the common ratio and apply that to the, the, the very last um, uh, term in the sequence. So let's do one word problem here and I'll call it quits. So um, suppose you email a joke to three friends on Monday. Each of those friends sends the joke on to three of their friends on Tuesday. Each person who receives the joke on Tuesday sends it to three more people on Wednesday and so on. So you originally tell a joke to three people and then those people tell a joke to three people and then those people tell the joke to three people. So we need to figure out is this a geometric sequence or arithmetic sequence? Well, to me this is going from three people to nine people and eventually this would be to 27 people so you go 3 to 9 to 27. So to me, this isn't growing at a, a common difference. We're not adding 6 to get from 3 to 9 and then adding 6 to get to 9 to 27. We're actually multiplying this by 3. So in this case, my common ratio is 3. Or again, you could take the second term divided by the first term and you'd still get 3. So to find the explicit formula, um, we need a, a sub n equals the first term times um, r to the n minus one power. So we know three is my common ratio and my a sub one is three because that's the first set of people that were told the joke. So to find explicit formula, it's gonna be a sub n equals three times three to the n minus one power. So this right here would be my explicit formula. So if I want to find out how many people would have the joke on the 15th day, I'm going to plug in a 15 for n. And I'm just going to do 15 minus 1 to give me 14, because I'm out of space here. And this is going to grow pretty fast here, it looks like. So 3 times 3 to the 14th power. Wow, you have, uh, I think it's 14,348,970 uh, people would, in this case, Hear the joke. So this must be some pretty good joke. So anyways, I hope this helps under, uh, explain how to do um, the basic uh, geometric and arithmetic sequence problems. Um, and have a good day. Bye-bye.